thought he would have given me a bit more of a harder time, but that's okay, thanks Lee. Two years ago I did a bit of a presentation up here and I thought Lee wouldn't let me up again. I don't think that he wants me to go any later than the first day. Lee started um, pestering me about doing something up here and we started off with a bit of plotting. In New Zealand, about 30% of the users plot 100% out of 12D. They generate a, a lot of different sort of types of plans, but we're just going to pick on one type of plan, which is probably a scheme type sort of plan. And we've just got a couple slides coming through of the same type of plan generated by different people displayed totally differently. And we're going to attempt to do a little bit of a display. We're going to actually start with a Synergy presentation, show a little bit of a workflow through Synergy with a task. And then we're going to create the, we need to, we're required to actually create a set out file plan and present that back to our client. And I'll be presenting the 12D side of it and Dolan's going to start with the, uh, with the Synergy. So use more out of civil software. Lane's, <coughs> excuse me, Lane's going to prompt me when I forget something. So uh, just carrying on from what Richard did the, uh, earlier on in the day in Synergy, we're going to do it more in a workflow based thing. This is a typical task, a typical workflow that you would integrate your Synergy with your 12D back to Synergy for your issuing for your clients and whatnot. So we start in the startup, we're just going to open this project here, Buckful, and we'll start by having a quick look at the dashboard. So as Richard said, the dashboard can contain all of your attributes, your images. We'll look at this one in particular. We've got 12 attributes for this particular job, and we have an error in one of those attributes that I'm going to actually have to go and update. Okay, so I'm going to update job address two. That's not Pookie, it's actually Pookie Koei. Yes, in New Zealand we have some very funny place names that you guys won't be able to pronounce, but that's all right. So I'm going to update that attribute, and that's going to carry through for any other any of the attribute references that I've got within, obviously, 12D model and documentations. I'll just whiz down the list. We've also got the on the dashboard. We've got active items that are currently uh, the tasks, and uh, check out items on the dashboard if I've got anything opened up or if Lane's got anything opened up. So we've got the dashboard, the attributes, and if there's any files associated with the actual overall job itself, the Synergy job. This X Explorer looking list, we'll go through this in a little bit. We'll come back to the task list. That was to get you up to the dashboard. Have a look at Teams. Now, the one big difference with us with Teams, it's all about the team role as opposed to the team person because over the life of a project, your survey may change three or four times, your site manager may change, your you know, checking manager. So what you'll see here is we've got a role and then we've got a contact. And it's all about the role when it comes to the task. Hang on, we've got missing one here, survey. Okay, let's find one. And Owen Bledisloe would be pretty good, eh? Okay, so we've uh, updated that, and you can save it, and you can email it, and do it uh, to those task loads. But the important thing is it's about the role rather than the person when it comes to tasks, because you don't want emails uh, being automatically sent to somebody who's left the company two or three years ago, okay? It's all about that. So that's where we come there. Some of the outputs, the 12DA, the drawings, the PDFs. Where was going with that? We'll come back to those ones, the PDFs and the reports when we start doing issuing. Um, we look at the administration and the correspondence. Now, obviously, we've got a Word document here, and if I just open that up and check it out, yes, check that one out, we've got a document, and that document had some Synergy attributes in it, and all of your Microsoft tools, they've got your 12D Synergy taskbar. So what was Pookie, I need to update, so I can just go and go refresh attributes and you'll see that it updates any of those changed attributes from Synergy with your um, Word documents and anything that's been inserted. And of course, if you wanted to insert a new attribute on a document, it's as easy as going and insert. It'll list all of the attributes that are within the job, and you can insert those anywhere in your documents that you want to be refreshed. Okay, so I've updated that. I'm just going to close it. I'm going to save it, and Synergy's going to say, do you want to check it back in? Yes, I'm going to check that back in, and we're going to describe the change, but I'm going to be lazy and actually pick it from a pre-defined pre list, updated up attributes, and hit submit. 
and it's got a task associated with that Word document. Do I want to go and need it that now? No, I'll go and do it manually. Okay, so we've got correspondence. We've got some emails. And just looking at an email here, uh, we've got an email that's come through, typical uh, Microsoft Outlook. And again, you've got a 12D Synergy ribbon there that you can do some stuff with. I've got an email that's come in with a 12DA file as an attachment and I can choose what I want to do. I don't want the email at the moment, I'm just going to save the attachments. So if I go save attachments, go save, it'll come up with my favourites, and go, ooh, 12D is not. Use, last a new version, and give it a describe. Uploaded file to 12D Synergy and hit submit. And that file saved there. If I wanted to save the entire email plus the file, I can come up in Microsoft Outlook and select upload upload that to a favorite place, users. It'll say Synergy Task Log. It's put a predefined Synergy stamp on it. And you'll see that that's updated with the stamp. And you've got this little tick button here on the email, which means somebody's already uploaded that, or I've uploaded that to Synergy. Anybody who was CC'd in on the email, that little tick will automatically appear on the Outlook so they know they don't have to deal with it, okay? It's already been done by somebody else. Right. And uh, back into Synergy, where we are, uh, looking at photos, you know, emails, Word documents, handles everything, photos here, Han buggy, what's that one? If I open that up, it's Han on the Rotorua or bungee, and we've got one in there, oh, some of the 2005 team, some old faces, okay? But you can drag and drop photos and, and any documents into, into Synergy. Right. We've got the 12D side of things that uh, Lane's going to do, but I'm going to come into this task list because I've actually edited a Word file. I needed to create a cost estimate. That cost estimate's been done. So you can see within your typical task, you've got who's updated it, what's the priority, what's the state, and these are just user-defined attributes that you have. You can have attributes on the actual task, you know, what's dependencies for the other task and file associations. We've obviously got that Word document that I've updated. I've finished my part of the job. I'm gonna go closed. It says, do you wanna set the progress to 100%? Yes, absolutely, and I'll submit that. And that job is task complete. And so that's my part of the job as the Synergy Manager. There's some other tasks here, create a plan and set out. And Lane's gonna take that over and show you the integration with 12D model. Just move across, Tom. So now I'm into my part. I've got to create a uh, set out file and also a, a plan. So I'm going to take you through a few of the drafting options. As I said, we do 100% drafting in New Zealand. And just to go and open up this particular project here. That's actually going to download into my workspace. I've actually got this on my C drive, just uh, cut out a bit of the old network traffic, loading up my files. Those custom files could be in Synergy. Uh, in my case, they're not. Now, just looking through at the project, those uh, attributes that Dylan was dealing with, they're all here. So we can actually see our attributes. We've got our typical project details, and we've also got all the Synergy attributes. And you can see the Puku code has actually been updated already. Now, we're going to use those attributes in our plan forms. So you can see here I've got my job address coming from Synergy. We can use user type sort of attributes when I'm actually creating my TDF and you can also use any of those other project files. Now I'm going to go and grab that file. I'm going to read that in from um, Synergy. So I can now just go and look and browse into Synergy. Go and look for that particular project and it was in 12D. I can grab that file. I could have dragged and dropped that from Synergy but uh, with all my screen space, I thought it was just a little bit easier to actually just browse for it. So there's my data, pretty happy with that. Let's kill that. So I'm just working on this particular plan here. Yeah, you probably, I'm just gonna go through a couple of the uh, simpler things that you can use in 12D, just like placing text in that, using some of the new type sort of names, easy way to get through. I'm just gonna type in uh, TX5, oh sorry, TX5, enter. And that set all my attributes. I'm going to place some text. Let's place a point down here. What are we going to call this? Rugby Road. 
and just go okay and uh, grips we can just move that around now you'll notice in a lot of the CAD functions we use the status bar a lot down the bottom there it's actually got T for tangential and I can just go and pick on a point tangential to here and that's setting that tangent through so now we do a lot of drafting in paper space or sorry paper size units all my text that I place is paper size with symbols paper size so I'm going to use the new settings options here in V11 and go to my settings just change the scale and when I change the scale you'll notice that all my paper size symbols and text will change to that particular scale just makes it a bit easier to get things around uh, just make sure I'm not missing out on anything Dylan's going to keep control of me I'm going to set up some dimensions just set the correct model and we've got these new dimensions through here lots of different types no way I'll ever get through any of them or all of them so I'm just going to start off with this uh, create linear dimension and I'm just going to do an aligned dimension and I just zoom in a little bit here just pick a point pick another point define my length away that's my dimension really easy to use now David Owens is actually going to do a whole lot of show how these can be customized and how they can be created really easy to place now another one that we found that the survey is probably need is this dropped dimension to a segment quite often you know you just want to set out a point from the edge of the building onto an actual boundary side so you can actually quite simply just pick your points and the point that you want to be offset from now these are all associative dimensions so I'll show you in a moment that we can actually start moving the buildings or the sections and they're all linked through to those now my area is also a dimension I'm just going to dimensions we've got my areas and I'm just going to go T for type or text and I can choose different predefined text types and this one's going to be a floor area and I just select my building and that's come up with floor area and in meters I'm going to do another one and I've got a little bit of a formula in the background here if it's under a certain length I want to display it in square meters otherwise hectares so I just pick on that one there and that's got my area in there that's for the parcel itself parcel of land leaders we've got all these nice intelligent leaders these are all new ones yeah you can start off just you know picking and then just finding what you want but they've made all this nice these nice new toolbars and that and I just want to label with a leader line with the name this is a borehole just pick my point pick my location and that's just taken out the name of the string really easy really smart Okay, now, as I said, these are all associated, and <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> we haven't even got to the best bit. <laughs> if I uh, pick this point of my house that I want to move, you'll see that everything is associated. My area, floor area, all update, everything else like that. So it's all dynamic. So if I go escape, and you want to actually move your parcel, you can do that as well. Grab that point, and as it's all associated it will move around you can clap again now <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> okay now uh, we uh, Lee found this one by mistake I think I don't know how this one got in here but there is what something you know when Lee was actually mucking around with the menus and that it says what's the same as I said I wouldn't have a clue so you, what you can do is same as same as that dimension there go and pick that point there place it there and it will use the same as dimension so Lee's promised me that we could have the same as for text as well or, or just pester as programmers as he said before um, now we have all the different edit, edit options you know like this text is based around the centroid of the actual house and what I want to do is I want to edit that particular text so I'm just going to my dimensions go to my edits pick my plan floor area pick the control point and I can just move that through now the beauty of that is, is that that will actually work with all your text. So I can grab this point here, you know, move my text to a new location, and that is still associated to that particular point. My borehole, you know, uh, you might just want to go over here. It will flip on the other side as well. So, or you can actually go and pick another type, and it will change the label type as well. So it's just reading out the association to those particular points. Now we're on to, uh, uh, we're going to create tables as well. 
the tables are, are really powerful and also dynamic in that. So I, I want to create a set out file of this building. First of all, I've got to create a CSV file. So I'm going to just go output, XYZ, point ID, and go and pick my string, pick my house string, and just create a file. Just replace it. Now I'll just go and open that. Opens up Excel automatically, and I could actually edit this. I could go and insert a line. Just type in something here like house set out. I'm not a really fast typer like you know, Richard. You see him this morning, you know, God, too fast. So just go slow so you can keep up with me. Let's just save this. Yep, fine, good. So I'll leave that panel over there because I'm going to come back to that later. I'm going to actually put a um, set out table somewhere in this view. Don't know what that thing is, but we won't worry about that. Now down here with the tables, you can just create an ordinary table. You can have a uh, table associated to a super alignment or a CSV file, a tab file, whatever type of file that you want. And I'm going to go to model called label it, table, my style. You can have all different sorts of styles. My file that I'm associating it to. And I'm just going to pick a random spot anywhere. And that's about all I have to really put there. And I just go create. And there is my table created from the CSV file. Absolutely brilliant. Now, you can start editing these tables as well. So you've got different columns. You can actually start moving these columns into different positions. Uh, move them around, and they will update all dynamically. I won't get into that at the moment. I haven't got enough time. Uh, so yes. And that is compl oh, almost completed one of my tasks. Which is, yeah, I'm happy with my uh, setup file. And I'm going to go and add this to my Synergy project. This file. Just double click on that. And my outputs. I'm going to put that in my reports. And select that. And I'm going to copy that in. And it's existing on there, new version. Just add my file to Synergy. Submit that. Go across to my uh, Synergy. Go into my tasks. And my set out file. And I have now completed that part of my task. Submit. Back to 12D, because now I've got to complete my plan. Now, my uh, location, uh, sorry, my um, building, I want to just do a couple little bit, just a couple more things in here. Now, you're probably all pretty familiar that you can actually play, place your symbols in that. I'm just going to type in a peg. So I picked that because I know that annoys Peter when I say peg all the time. And I've got a symbol. Go across here, symbol. Now, I'm not going to just place a symbol just randomly. I'm going to go as a vertex. So I'm just pushing V on my keyboard and select my vertex point. And that's actually got that symbol there placed. Now, why I did it as a vertex is now I can just go left arrow and that just goes around placing that symbol all the way around that particular house. I'm also going to place it around my uh, property as well. And just once again, just go zooming around. And that's placed all of those symbols all the way around. The other one is, is you know, for effect, you know, like you might want to highlight things in different shadings. I'm sure you all know that you can actually do shades and fills. Just do a fill. Just do a orange color, and I can blend amount of transparency, and do my parcel as well. And I've got a nice gray color here, and also make that transparent as well. Okay, that sounds good. Now, multi-strings properties. This was a real hard one for me to get in, Richard. <laughs> and he said the words afterwards. That was simple <laughs> and useful. I can just go and pick something. So I might want to just pick my house, and I might want to change the actual line style. So I just change it to a house building style, and... Just update that. I'll just go and uh, clear that because it's not showing through. But there it is there. So I can just change the property. So you don't have to know all of the different menus, where to find things. So as a new user, 
this is very easy to start changing things. Or you might want to change something just as simple as this text here. You, know? uh, you have all of your possible attributes here. You, know, you want to edit the text, double click on it, and you can, I should put winner after that, eh? <laughs> uh, we can put um, borders around here. Nice simple border, just here's border. Hey, I might want to use one of these new V11 border, borders capsule, and that just changes those. Really easy, but it gets better yet. I can actually go pick, and down the bottom there, I've got my multi-pick selection, so I can go R for rectangle, and I can just say, hey, look, I want to pick everything in there. So that's selected every item. Then when I actually say, look up here, 48 items, I can then just say, hey, look, I just want to deal with the text items. Then I could actually uh, select some of these and deselect them, and I can only change some of the properties. So that's the new multi-strings panel. And you can also use your selections and your typical type sort of things as well. So that has come along really well. Well done, thank you. Yep. I told you, Richard. <laughs> so, hey, that's my uh, plan just about complete. Yeah, this is for my uh, just my house diagram, uh, where my set out is. Uh, I want to put a location plan in. Okay, I'll just change that, because I don't like that uh, line. Uh, I'll just change and just go enter, just change my model, and I also want to dimension through here just my stage area where I'm working. Uh, let's go up to here, which is going to be my label area, and go type again, and I've picked this format here so that it's over a certain size, this will actually label out in hectares. So you know, that's just using the same format and things like that so you can display things uh, how you want to get those on. So the other one is uh, probably definitely have to have a north point. Just go north for my symbols. Using that names file again, uh, just going to place a symbol. Lost it, found it. Just place it up here. And there's my north point. Now the other one is, is we're all very familiar with uh, rasters. So I've already got a raster actually um, bought in. There's my raster. Oh, how many times you get sick of this? You know, so what we've got is our new options here. Uh, go over to the settings, go to models, click on CAD rasters, move it to the bottom. A nice and easy way of shifting things around with the order. That's absolutely fantastic. So the other one is, is that sometimes your rasters are, are just too bright and you just want to dull them down instead of going into Photoshop and replacing uh, uh, everything. I can just go into my strings, Rasters, uh, edit, pick my raster, and my appearance. <laughs> just put a black, yellow, and red, green hat on. Uh, 0.7, and that will actually dull out that. So that's just dulled out, just taking a bit of the edge off the actual color of the raster. So yeah, makes it look a lot neater. Now. What I've done now is I've actually sort of got my uh, my views and models and that uh, all starting to, to come together. Yeah, like I've got um, my table, I've got a long section, you never saw me do that. I've got my simple plot and uh, obviously my staged area. Now I'm going to start talking a little bit about our uh, new uh, plot frames, our new pl plot sheets. It used to be called pretty plot, so I'm just getting used to the new words, plot sheet. Uh, we can read in a plot sheet file. I'm going to create one from scratch. So I can choose my title block file that I'm actually going to use. And just set that. And I can pick a, an existing TBF file. And then I can put in my user type sort of attributes. So just uh, Elaine, because I can spell that. And set that. And finish. And there is my plot sheet ready to go. So that's got my title file in here. Now I can actually start placing a frame. And I'm just going to go from here to here. And then it asks me for the name. I can rename it if I want. I can actually give each plot frame a different scale. Uh, I can also give it a world coordinate. I'm just going to pick a random point just down here somewhere. And just go set. Now, what we, get, what we have here on this view is we have the outside rectangle, which is your paper, and your inside rectangle is where it's going to plot. So we can start editing 
the plot frames. So I can actually grab these points, I can actually change the size of it, where it's going to sit, uh, and the location on the actual page. Uh, I can then start moving this plot frame, and I can move that in world space here. So I can place that in that position there. So you can relocate it everywhere you want. And you can have multiple plot frames, which uh, multiple frames that I'll show you in a moment. I'm going to use my uh, uh, plotter, just select my plotter type, and I'm just going to create a PDF file, just go plot. It's going away using the new plotter engine, and there is my plot created. Very simple, very easy. You uh, can turn off the frame. You, you can turn off that border as well. So uh, I'm going to do this in a bit more depth now. Uh, I do have a existing file, which I'm going to read in. And I've actually got four different uh, plot frames and the different locations. Set out table and everything. Now the only other one that I want is I want to put some notes in here. So uh, I, there's a feature that's always been in here that you can actually start putting notes in paper space sort of coordinates. Uh, first of all I'll read them in and I'm sure you've all used the uh, 12DA library and uh, I've already got my notes pre-written here. I'll just go and select those notes. I'm going to use the model that they were created in and the position, import those. So there are my CAD notes coming in. Okay, so you just read those in. I've also got a legend here that I want to read in and import. I suppose a legend would be like Buck Shelford. Okay, and they are going to plot in my plot units. Now, they are held in my title block and I can plot one model. So if I've got any of those notes or anything that I want, I can just draw everything in that particular model. Just one? Uh, just one. And uh, hey, let's create a plot. No, it's okay. And there's my plot. And with all of my different points. Excellent. There is more. I want to move that house table. Yeah, imagine how painful that is. I don't have to go and move it in the space. I can come here and I can edit this. And look at these smart, grippy things. You know, like, see the lines all lining up and that? So I can just move them around into the correct location, go plot, replace that, yes. And it's moved. Nice and simple. So you've got total control over where setting everything. Uh, right, that's all good. So I'm just going to finish that. Happy with that. I'll write that out. Uh, that plot there, I want to actually add that through to my synergy. So I go into my project, into my outputs, PDFs, and I'm going to copy that file in, add that to my 12D submit. And that's copying my PDF up into the job. So at this stage now, uh, I can close this. Uh, project save and I can then uh, upload that, check that file back in by 12D model um, complete if I was Richard I'd type more and that's just copying up the files that have actually changed go to my task and there's my task here, and that's now closed, 100% complete, submit, task complete. And that's my part as a surveyor done, I'll pass you on to Dolan. And of course, um, of course he could have associated those files to the task as well, now that you've got the new files, here's the task, 100%, go into associations, pick those two files so you keep all that track of the way along. So you've got your plans, you've done all your plotting out of 12D, you've got your PDFs, and then you want to issue those to the client, to the contractor or whatnot. And Synergy has an issuing um, function in it as well, and that's under these issued files. So you can go and create an issue set, and the issues uh, record all of the which PDF, which version, if it's been updated, the revision number, and track all that in the background. So I just want to actually create a uh, new revision set.
client. To the client, create a new revision set. I'll call this, uh, you know, set out house. I, I type slightly faster than Lane. You can put a description in here, you know, a, uh, a, that's actually attached to that issue set. We go create, and uh, Sinji says, do you want to add these files now? And yes, I want to select the files to be issued, and I can come in into the outputs, and well, the first one is the PDF, and we've got our test number one, is it? Oh, that one there, that'll do. Would you like to add more files to the issue set? Yeah, I'll do some more files. So we've got that um, under the outputs, we've got the actual set out CSV that the surveyor needs under the reports. And we're going to add that file in the issue set as well. And no, I'm happy at the moment. We'll create the issue set there. And until the time that I actually issue it, I can go and add more and more files. So, you know, you've got one person doing these plots, one person doing these plots. And then when they're all complete, you can actually go and issue it out. And so uh, I'm done. I can click that issue set, and I'm actually going to go away and issue them. Uh, uh, issue reason. Uh, what's the, oh, this is for approval, let's say. And who am I going to issue it to? Well, we're going to go and find who I'm going to issue it to. And of course, Owen Bled is low. He's going to get it. And uh, you can add any other team members. And you can, oh, actually, I need to um, issue it to me as well. There's just a me button. I'm lame for now. And when you're all done with that, you select issue. And it says, how would you like to issue it? It's uh, 9.16 megabytes. Well, I can do it manually. I can do it via email. Actually, I want to do it via Outlook. I'm going to actually go and attach these files. Do I want to zip the files up or do I want to send them unzipped? Oh, no, do not zip. And would you like to send this email receipt containing information about this issue? Yeah, yeah, I only, just to myself or if I've got a manager or a checker, you know, you can uh, add them as well. I'll go just to myself. And in the background, the Outlook's going to start flashing. And basically, it's opened Outlook, attached those files, and put any person to. And so you can track all those changes, hit send away, and that's actually issuing your plotted data that you've done out of 12B. And that's us.